Hi, my name is Eric Schaefer, and today we're going to take a look at a purchase order solution that I built with K2 Forms. Let's start off in the K2 Designer. The K2 Designer is a web-based tool that allows you to assemble K2 form-based solutions using a bunch of reusable components. The first uh, set of components that you work with is the K2 Smart Objects. These are the business entities that represent data that lives in other different systems within your organization. In our purchase order example, I have a purchase order object. It allows me to create and save and delete purchase orders in my purchase order system, as well as a, an associated purchase order line item uh, object. There's additional objects for surfacing which vendors I can order things from and which parts I can order from which vendor. Also have an object that's going to store and track all the comments that are associated to uh, this particular solution. Based on the smart objects, uh, a set of views can be created that will then surface a way to interact with these basic uh, with these with these business objects, how to create uh, a new purchase order, or how to view a set of comments, and so on. Based upon these views, you can then start assembling those views into what are called pages. And a page is just a collection of views with associated rules to drive the uh, to drive the solution forward. The pages then can be associated to a business process that can actually then um, drive the the overall solution. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and look at a new purchase order um, form. I'm going to go to my SharePoint site here and just click on a link to open up uh, this form. When the form loads up, you'll see that uh, it has a bunch of different uh, sections on it. Um, and these are the different views. So there's a view here for purchase order details, a view for the vendor details, a view for line items, um, and, uh, and finally attachments. So we're going to go ahead and just fill out this uh, form real quick. I'm going to add a requester. And this is an ability for me to request on behalf of an ad additional user. Um, this is using a lookup control, which will open a subform for me to show me another view. And this is a view that represents my Active Directory backend system, where I can go ahead and select a particular user, um, and it will uh, capture those, uh, those uh, details back into the form. I'm going to select a delivery date here. Uh, I'm going to uh, select a priority using my slider control. When I slide over, um, you can notice I'm changing the color of the uh, priority label there, just to kind of give an indication of uh, how, how urgent this uh, particular order is. Add some notes. And then uh, I have a drop-down list here that's actually bound to another smart object, that vendor smart object, which will pull back the list of vendors that I can order from. And when I go ahead and select a particular vendor, it's going to go and retrieve details about that vendor into the vendor details view over here, as well as doing something with the line items down below uh, that I'll talk about in a moment. When the vendor details information loads up, you can see I've uh, uh, done some uh, stylizing of the, uh, of the name uh, so that it pops out a little bit more. And I've also left the, uh, the information about the particular vendor as controls that I can edit. So if I need to go in and say, well, I actually know that they've changed their phone number, I want to go ahead and save that, I can save that back to the system directly from within this interface. If for some reason I were to come in and uh, clear that out and try to save that, it basically there's some validation behind the scenes that says this is a required field and you can't save without that entering uh, a value. If I put in something that's obviously not a phone number, try to save it, there's additional um, validation that says that that's not a valid, uh, that's not a valid phone number. So we'll just go in and remember again. And we can go ahead and save it. Additionally, uh, I've added the ability to look and see what do, is going on with this particular vendor in terms of orders that we are already have outstanding with that vendor. So I've added a button here that will open up a subform and show me a list of all the purchase orders and filter that list by the particular vendor that we're looking at. Once I see that I have a bunch of uh, line items here or uh, purchase orders, I can go ahead and actually click into one of these. That subform will go ahead and load up the details, and you can see the details of that particular order, as well as the line items, line items of that order. I can also go ahead and look at the comments that have been added as, as this part the order has been going through, which is another subform, another reusable uh, component uh, that's pretty generic for just uh, tracking comments. And you can see that there's one comment there, and I can add another comment in line here and it will track it as me and it tracks the date and time of that, uh, that comment. We jump back to our 
main form here, we can go ahead and continue filling out the, the details of our purchase order. The line items I mentioned uh, when I selected the vendor um, had some filtering that took place. And what basically has happened here is that when I go ahead and select um, items to add to my, to my purchase order, that list of items has been filtered based upon the vendor that I've selected so that I can control um, which items are being added here. So let's go ahead and add just a couple of items, add another line item, and you'll see as I start adding, the subtotal tax and, and final totals um, are being updated as well through some uh, calculations that I've uh, put in there. So I'll go ahead and just finish that off there, and we can see our, our purchase order total. Additionally, I've added a capability to add attachments. So I'll just go ahead and add a attachment to this form. Maybe we have a scanned PO that we want to uh, send with this uh, with this order. This particular view for attachments is actually hooked up to a SharePoint list on the back, or a SharePoint document library uh, on the back side of this, so that when I actually go and click the Submit button, in addition to creating the order and creating the line items and submitting it for approval, it's actually going to also go and create a document set in a particular document library in my SharePoint environment uh, specifically for this purchase order and then upload the attachment into that, uh, that document set. So let's go see what happens here when I click Submit. So it's going to go ahead and create the purchase order, and the line items, upload the attachment. It submitted our request for approval. And when I close that request, it's actually just going to take me back to my, to my home page here. If I go into the purchase orders library, I mentioned that it created a document set for us. So let's go see if that document set has been created. And we can see that uh, just a moment ago, um, order 34 uh, document set was created. I click into that document set, we'll see that the document, uh, the PO scan that we uh, attached has now been uploaded. So it's being stored inside of SharePoint versus being stored um, in some other system. If we go back to our home page and look at our My Processes web part, we should see that Order 34 uh, is now sitting in a manager approval state and it's active. Um, we can just go ahead and check out the, uh, the process view flow see exactly where it is and who it's assigned to. If we go into the manager approval step here as an example. I can see that it's currently assigned to, uh, to Jono. So let's go open up Jono's browser. Here I'm logged in as Jonathan King. If I refresh his work list, we'll see a new task for PO number 34. Clicking on the link then will take me into the K2 form for the task. And you'll see that all behind the scenes, once this uh, loads up, all the details uh, for that purchase order are being loaded up, the vendor, the purchase order details, the line items, the total amounts, um, as well as a link to that, uh, that document that we attached as well. Down at the bottom, we've also added a little workflow step that allows me to go ahead and take the action on this particular task. So first, I'll probably wanna go in and add some comments. And as you can see, the same comment page is being reused here, where I can add a comment that says that good. Go ahead and add that comment. Close the comment page and go ahead and mark this as approved. Tells me that it's been submitted and it's been completed. If we go back and refresh our work list, that task will disappear. And if we look at the view flow diagram, we can see that it's gone into an approval status. And that's a, just a little bit of a brief introduction to a, a purchase order solution that I built using K2 SmartForms. I didn't have to write any code to build the solution. Um, I built all the views uh, in this design experience and the pages and the process itself, all within the, the web-based tooling in, in a matter of a day or so. For more information about how K2 can help your business, visit us at www.k2.com.